Hey there, I'm Heidi Swap, and I'm here at scrapbook.com and I'm going to show you a really fun, just beautiful um, winter wonderland book. I'm going to show you how I've used the mink, how I've used the mini evolution, and also the cinch to create this fun book. Now what's really fun about it is that here on the front is kind of like a little window and I've got like some little fun snow in it and you know you can't so you can't touch those pieces which I just love that it's kind of like a little snow globe vibe um, so I'm also going to show you how to create this kind of 3d window in the front of the book and I also did the same thing in the back so I've used my new winter wonderland co collection so I'm going to show you like all of my secrets I'm going to start with showing you how I added gold foil to these die cut pieces I'm also going to show you the stamping how I put together the front of the book. I'm going to show you how I added all these pages and and binded it together. So sit back, buckle up, get a get a drink and let's have some fun. All right, I'm going to start out. I okay, so these are my brand new dies. And there's three dies in the set and I'll show you actually how the set comes. So in this set you get stamps and you get the three dies. So the word Christmas in my handwriting, this little deer, and also the wreath. All right. So what I have right here, these black sheets, we call them toner sheets. And it's a mink product. So this entire sheet has been coated with a toner reactive mink ink, right? So we're going to start with using this. Isn't it so cute? This is the mini evolution and it packs all the power to do your die cutting and your embossing and all that stuff, just kind of taking up a little bit less space and being a little bit less heavy, right? These are the little uh, blocks and bases that you put through it. And the three new dies from my collection fit in it, no problem. So we're gonna start out by cutting this guy down so that it will fit through um, this this two inch, two and a half inch opening. Actually, let me measure it for you. Three inch, three inch opening. Very important, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy just a little less than three inches. We're gonna make sure it fits perfect. Now, here's kind of the trick. Before we start die cutting, we're super excited about that, right? What we wanna do is add foil to the toner sheets. What we found is that the die cutting and also digital cutting of the toner sheets actually works better if you foil the piece first. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab out a piece of gold foil and I'm using my foil scissors to cut it and I'm just gonna kind of cut a piece that will cover that toner sheet completely. I have my mink all ready to go. It's already heated to a three, which is perfect for the toner sheets. And I'm gonna open the transfer sheet and I'm gonna go ahead and set the toner sheet inside and add the gold foil. All right, and then just close it. Now it's really important to note that your foil is so the bottom of the foil is actually on the top of the toner sheet. All right, we're gonna close this up, get all the wrinkles out of there and just send it right through the mink. Okay, so I just ran this through the mink and as you just lift it up out of the transfer sheet and remove the foil, you can see that it's covered the entire surface of the toner sheet perfectly, right? And now I can prepare to send that right through the mini evolution as a die cut. So I'm gonna turn off my mink and set aside my transfer sheet. And I'm gonna pull over this little, this cute little guy, so cute. Okay, here on the back is this little locking mechanism. So I'm right-handed, so I like to put the roller on my right. I'm gonna go ahead and lock it down. Now there's, there's multiple plates because there's an embossing plate and also a cutting plate the B, it's like on the little corner there, is the cutting plate, okay? So I'm gonna take my, the base, which is a C, if you look at it there in the corner, 
stick my paper on there and I'm going to use the Christmas word and I'm going to use this little deer guy. So cute. And then I'll sandwich, build my little sandwich. No, isn't, isn't that what we like to call it? And then just go ahead and roll it through. We should be good to go. All right, so our pieces are in there. And you know, life hack, I like to use seam, a seam ripper because it just gives me like a little, a little handle. And that's how I like to pull them out. I don't know if you guys have any other great ideas, just comment below for me. I love hearing what works for everybody else as well. This word Christmas is in my handwriting and so it's really detailed. And so you just wanna be real careful as you pull it out of the die. And you really wanna be careful that you keep track of that cute little dot to the eye. That, that guy is, is hard to keep track of. I'm gonna go ahead and set those die cut pieces aside. Again, trying really hard not to lose that dot to the eye. And we're gonna go ahead and make the covers. So this is kind of our first step. This is chipboard. I love to use this to make my own DIY books of all kind. And the size of my book is six by eight. So I'm actually gonna to have to make two cuts in my chipboard. A lot of people ask me how to cut chipboard. This is kind of how I do it. All right, so the first cut I'm gonna make is at eight inches. And you can see that I'm just putting it in my normal trimmer but I'm not gonna be able to, to cut all the way through the chipboard. It's just gonna kind of score it, all right? So I can see where that cutting line is. Then I like to set aside my trimmer and pull out my ruler. Now this one is nice because it's a magnetic ruler that works with my Heidi Swap mat. I kind of use it for everything. And what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and using an X-Acto or some type of utility knife, this one that I'm using is from We Are. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right down that same line that I've already kind of like scored. But don't try to cut it like all at once. If you try to cut through it all at once, um, you, you push really hard and, and you risk kind of like cutting your finger off, which don't worry, I've done that before too. So just go ahead and take a few swipes at it and you'll feel it come apart. The next cut we're gonna make is at six inches. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. Just go ahead and cut it to score and then take a couple passes on cutting all the way through. All right, now we have the front and back upper covers. So these are the pieces that I have chosen for the front cover, kind of this fun um, candy cane stripe and then also the star stripe. So if you look at my sample, you can see that the star shape shows through the little window and the candy cane stripe is actually what's on the front. And we have to cut a window right out of the center of the front. Now I chose to cut, um, this little opening is like a credit card size, which makes it really easy if you have a credit card handy. You can use that to trace that window. Um, I also have already cut a little two by three window. I find this is a really easy way to go ahead and cut and then trace your opening. All right, now for time's sake, I kind of already have this done. Um, I traced that opening and cut it, very similar to the same way that I just taught you how to cut the boards apart. What's really important is just not to try to cut all the way through the chipboard in one swipe and to take multiple swipes. So trace it and then cut it. We actually are gonna do the same thing for the back cover, because as I mentioned, I made a little window in the back cover. Now, the process is exactly the same for the back cover, where I cut like a little square, I traced it, and, um, and then I'm just gonna show you, I traced it, and then I'm just lining up my ruler, and we're just gonna go ahead and cut down and usually it's like two or three little swipes and then you can tell. All right, so now we have our two windows for the front 
and the back cover. So let's start with the front cover. A really important part of this process is that we want to trace exactly what the front cover piece, exactly so that it fits on the front cover. So you're gonna take your full size sheet, you're gonna lay it right underneath your cover and then trace the outside and also trace the inside. Go ahead and then cut that and it's gonna look like this. So I'm, I'm hopping ahead, making it look super easy, right? Then what we're gonna need is that inside piece that's gonna show up behind our little window. Now in order to make the window, you're also gonna need a little piece of clear sheet. Transparency works great. I like to make sure that it's not an inkjet because the inkjet one is rough on one side and not as clear to see through. So that's just kind of a personal preference. So the way this is gonna go down is that it's gonna be the front cover, then the window, then the chipboard, and then the backer. So obviously use your cover as the template to cut your backer as well when you cut that down. We're gonna focus kind of on the backer to start out with. And you can see through here that I went ahead and traced kind of a really pencil, like a light pencil line on this background so that I know where I'm working to create my little stamping and um, to put the, the stuff that's gonna show through the window. So I can set all that stuff aside and I'm gonna pull back in my cute little reindeer and I'm also gonna gather up my stamps. Now I did use stamps from both of the stamp sets. This one is the stamp set that comes with the dies. And then this is the stamp set that is just all clear stamps. And I used a couple of different colors. Let me show you what I used. I used the black archival from Ranger, the red geranium, and then also the fern green. These are the best, the colors that I like the best that go with the collection um, and the stamps that I like as well. So I'm just using really small stamps for this particular project because they're just kind of going in this teeny small area. So I'm gonna use this circular acrylic block that is from scrapbook.com. All right, now, because I'm gonna kind of work around my little deer guy, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere him in place so I know where I want to work. All right, so just put a little adhesive on the back and then go ahead I kind of floated him above the bottom just a little bit because I did kind of add a little bit of fake snow um, so that that worked. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I like this little season of giving and I stamped that in black. All right, and then there's this cute joy and I used red for this one, right over the top of that. And then I used the green to do some, some foliage. And there's some different, there's several different types of foliage in this um, set. And I just liked it to kind of be coming off the edge of where my little pencil line is. So I just kind of did a couple that create a cute corner. But I also really love the, the little baby holly leaves. So I'm also gonna add a little holly leaf up here. We'll use red for the berries. Perfect. All right, so that'll do it for the stamping. And now we're just gonna add a little bit of ephemera. I love this super cute little stamps. I even liked using the corners on the inside. So I took these big photo corners and I went ahead and I kind of centered the line so that it would just tuck in on the edge of the window. Alrighty. 
So it kind of covers up some of my stamping, just kind of has that stamping underneath there. All right, so now you can see kind of how you can use your cover kind of as a reference to tell you how it's looking. And it's looking great. This is kind of the point where we start building the cover. So our first step is that we're gonna go ahead and attach the chipboard cover to the back. Now what's great is that I have used the double side paper so that on the inside of my cover is gonna be pretty as well with the same paper. In general, as a general rule, I really like to apply the adhesive to the paper and not to the chipboard. Sometimes when you apply the adhesive to the chipboard, uh, it pulls up the layers of the chipboard and kind of is a little bit frustrating. So I'm gonna go ahead and run tape around the outside edge, as close to the edge as possible. And then also, I'm gonna run the tape right around that opening, kind of sealing, just making sure that that's gonna really be sealed in there. All right, now, I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. You can kind of use your pencil lines as a guide and you can make sure all your corners are fitting. There we go. Looks like I've got a little bit of overhang, so you just use your craft knife to, to clean that up. Right now would be the time that you could add some little baby sequins or stars or glitter, anything that you kind of want to have floating around in there is fun. And then I'm just gonna cut a little piece of that acetate sheet. And I wanna make sure that it's pretty clean. And that's gonna just lay right over the top of the window. That prevents it you from touching it or, you know, whatever. So this is one of my times when I'm telling you the exception to the rule. I guess I could also, I could also adhere it to the back of this paper before, but all right, options, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and really wanna push this down and make sure that it's nice and tight. All right, and then it's time to lay the top cover down. Okay, go ahead and adhere that, making sure that it really lines up with the window. All right, so I still kind of want to add a little bit of layering on top of even where the window is. And so this is where my cute little die cut Christmas comes into play. All right, and I've got a few other little ephemera pieces that I'm just gonna kind of, kind of layer down. Um, I like to adhere these really delicate uh, words with glossy accents. So I'm gonna give that just a second. Go ahead and place this piece of, this little banner is from the ephemera set. Kind of put it a little bit lower than the window. And then this little Christmas word can go kind of layer over the top of the banner and the window. Okay, so for the back cover, I have, I've got the same situation going on here, but um, I used the thickers on the inside of my little window and did just a little bit of stamping around it. So I cut out from the paper, including this cute little deer guy, cause he's like pretty much my fave, right? But this is the piece that I need to cut the whole for the window. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, use my cover lined up perfectly and then trace that little box. Now, whatever is easiest for you, if you wanna use your craft knife to cut that out or your trimmer, just kinda of do what works best for you. I really like using my trimmer. I kind of use the guide on the blade to tell me where to start and where to stop. All right, we'll pop that right out. So now this just kind of goes right over. And so again, I'm using a double-sided paper so that the inside of my window will be 
one paper and the backer is another design. All right, so I'm gonna grab my thickers here and I chose to put the number 19 for 2019 because I'm planning on using this this year. So kind of with it all aligned, I just go ahead and position the thickers in there. I just love these, I think mean, they're so cute. They're puffy stickers that are red and white. Honestly, they remind me of a cinnamon candy cane, you know, the hot ones. All right, now I do wanna add a little bit of stamping detail and you might be able to see that I can kind of see the pencil lines there. So I'm gonna set that aside and just go ahead and erase my pencil lines. And we're gonna go back to our stamp sets. And again, I'm just kind of used pieces from each stamp set. I used the Mary and I just kind of centered that right under the window. And then I just used a little bit of the greenery, kind of create a little green. So just like our previous, what we did on the cover, we're going to go ahead and adhere the, the backer to the cover, put the acetate on, and then this top, which is actually the back of the book. And I'm gonna adhere the acetate window to the back of the cover. So I can get that to really lay down flat. And then we'll adhere this over the top. So now we have our two little shadow boxes in the covers. And now we can start working on the inside pages. Now, what I've done already kind of ahead of time is I pre-cut a bunch of papers to the size of the book, which is a six by eight. And this is where my old friend, this is, I mean, like if we're really talking about Christmas and Christmas gifts, this is seriously the best. And um, what's so fun is that you can just make your, your own books whenever you want. So let me just kind of show you exactly how it works. Um, each one of these knobs controls whether or not a hole punches, all right? So in our situation right now, we're gonna go ahead, I've already cut the paper to six by eight. I'm gonna stick it in. And so this guy moves. So you want this completely closed to start and we'll stick it in and pull it down towards you. All right, you've got your holes ready to go. Then you open this all the way up, put your paper all the way down to the edge of it, and then push down this little guide. That will ensure that the lines are gonna, are gonna line up. Now for, for me, if I were to punch all the, all the holes down, there would be one hole that was kind of halfway on and halfway off. So it's kind of tricky to see. I'm just gonna pull the number four out and press it down, remove the guide, and what happens is it doesn't punch that next hole. So, very handy, right? All right, we're gonna do the same thing for the covers. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're punching down the side that is, that is appropriate. So this is the front cover, so I'm gonna want the holes on, the side, on this side, and this is the back cover. So I'm gonna push that number four back in, Press all the way down, slide the arm out, push down the guide, pull out the four, and press down. We'll do the same thing for the front cover. All right, I think you got the, you got the picture. 
So I went ahead and like I said, I already cut all of the pages that I want to add into the book. And I'm going to show you how to bind it just kind of for the sake of time. So full disclosure here is that I also cut up the little cut apart sheet. And so these can also, and we'll just do this real quick. And I kind of like to sort of stand back and kind of eyeball where the holes are going to be so that I make sure that I get the holes kind of centered on those little pieces that I'm going to add into the book. All right, one more. Perfect. Okay, so this edge of the cinch is actually where we go ahead and place the coil to hold it while you build the book. Now this is immediately where people tend to go wrong because they want to put the back cover on the book because that sort of makes sense. But actually what you do with the cinch is you build the inside of the book first, adding the covers on later. So like I said, I've got this stuff all cut out and I've kind of got my little cut aparts and extras because I really like to add different little pages on the inside. So kind of figure out the order that you want your book to go in and then just kind of, you just pop them right on the coils, just like this. I kind of like to pop in the little extra pieces. All right, and what, you know what I love about this is that there's just no rules. It doesn't have to be in any special order. So now all my insides are lined up on the coils. And this is the other thing that people do wrong. The next piece that goes on is actually the cover and it goes on face up. So that cover layers right on. Okay, and so then the back cover becomes the very top thing that you put on. Now, as I'm standing here, just like telling you guys what not to do, I realized that I punched it on the wrong side. So this cute piece now became my inside cover of my book. So this is now gonna be the back of my book that goes on right on top of the cover. All right, now simply lift all of your pieces off and we rotate around the cinch because now we're gonna use this back portion of the cinch, let me show you, where this is the area where it actually presses the binding down. Okay, this is the point where you go back to your packaging and it tells you what size up here at the top, what size coil that you have. Now, I've already cut down, when, the, when you buy the coils, they come, I believe this is 12 inches. And for me, I only needed eight inches. So I already cut that down with a little wire cutter. And I'm just simply gonna, you press and turn, well, other way. Press and turn, dial it down to three-fourths. Now, I always just like to check. This is just kind of my phobia, right? And so I usually take my little extra piece and just kind of make sure, oh yeah, I like how it's lining up. In this case, I feel like it's a little, it's pressing a little past where I wanna be. So I just kind of dialed it up a, a smidge. And we're gonna test it again. Yep, perfect. So what happens is I think all these dials are just a teeny bit different. So I always like to check. It's just kind of my life hack for you, right? Okay, so now when you pull the quills off, you're gonna make sure that your pages are kind of, hold it like this, so they're all kind of dangling. They're all kind of in the center, all right? Now this open edge of the coils is what you're gonna put against the back of the cinch, like I just showed you when I was testing it. So all the coils don't have to fit. You can press it down multiple times. So I have the majority of the coils in and I'm just gonna press it down. Perfect. And then I'll just press it down again. In order to make sure that it presses down really round, you wanna make sure that those open pieces are really directly against the back. But you don't want your fingers in there either. So that's why you kind of use the pages. Then the magic happens here. You flip your back cover around and you've got the back and the front and your book is ready to go. 
All right, you guys, I've given you a ton of information. I hope that you're feeling inspired and excited and ready to capture all of your holiday, winter, festive memories. Thanks for joining me and scrapbook.com and make pretty holiday stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you wanna see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.